You know, that's a little bit old, that chart. That chart's a couple of months old. And if you uh, want to really see something that said, take a look at what happened. Yesterday, former U.S. President Donald Trump became the first sitting or former president shot since the failed assassination attempt on President Ronald Reagan more than 40 years ago. And the attack is now fueling fears the 2024 presidential race already heated could completely descend into political violence, the likes the nation has not seen since 1968, which saw the assassination of presidential candidate Robert Kennedy and anarchy and chaos ensue at the Democratic National Convention in Chicago of that same year. But before we go any further, here's a rundown of what we know unfolded just yesterday. The former President Donald Trump was speaking at a campaign rally in Butler, Pennsylvania, which is approximately 33 miles outside of Pittsburgh. At around 6.08 p.m. local time, when Trump was speaking on the issue of illegal immigration, shots rang out. While Trump tried to say something on the microphone, Four more shots were heard in quick succession. Trump then grabbed his right ear and repeated shouts of get down were heard, which were followed by a fifth and sixth shot. The former president went down as half a dozen Secret Service agents moved in around him. Within seconds of Secret Service surrounding the ex-president, further shots were fired and additional agents rushed to the stage. 17 seconds after the shots were fired, the final shots were heard and a woman screamed. Three heavily armed law enforcement agent members moved onto the stage 22 seconds after the shooting began. And Secret, Secret Service agents then swiftly shouted instructions and proceeded to move the now bloodstained ex-president. Now visible once more after the gunfire started, his ear bloodied and streaks of blood smeared on his face. Trump raised his fist to the crowd, mouthing fight as people cheered and began chanting USA, USA. And just two minutes after the attempt on his life, Donald Trump was whisked away in an SUV. Heavily armed security forces then moved onto the rally location, which is still an active crime scene. Now, the alleged shooter and one Trump supporter were killed at the rally. This evening, we had what we're calling an assassination attempt against our former president, Donald Trump. It's still an active crime scene. As I mentioned, we have a number of agents on scene. We also are working closely with other federal agencies, our state partners, and our local police partners as well. Again, at this time, we are not prepared to identify who the shooter is. Uh, we are close to that identification, and as soon as we are 100% confident in who that individual is, we will share it with the press. Now, at around 8.42 p.m. local time, Trump gave his first account of the shooting on Truth Social. He said he was shot with a bullet that pierced the upper part of his right ear. He was taken to a nearby medical facility where he was examined and later discharged and has since returned to his golf club in Bedminster, New Jersey. His campaign released a statement saying the ex-president was doing well. The FBI has now identified 20-year-old Thomas Matthew Crooks of Bethel Park, Pennsylvania as the shooter. Crooks was shot and killed by the Secret Service seconds after he opened fire. Now, according to reports, the shooter was on a building rooftop just outside the rally venue. State voter records show Crooks was a registered Republican and had made a $15 contribution in 2017 to a Democratic aligned group. The motive behind the attempted assassination still remains unknown, and the FBI is still working to determine the motive. By 6.50 p.m. local time, President Joe Biden was given an initial briefing on the incident. Speaking about two hours after the shooting, President Biden said he is grateful that former President Donald Trump is safe. The president also said there is no place in America for this kind of violence. And it's also been reported that President Biden did in fact speak with Donald Trump later in the evening. The president was at his home in Delaware when the attack occurred, but returned to the White House last night. Look, there's no place in America for this kind of violence. It's sick. It's sick. It's one of the reasons why we have to unite this country. 
We cannot allow for this to be happening. We cannot be like this. We cannot condone this. But the bottom line is that the Trump rally was a rally that he should have been able to be conducted peacefully without any problem. But the idea, the idea that there's political violence or violence in America like this is just unheard of. It's just not appropriate. I mean, everybody, everybody must condemn it. Everybody. Now, the attempted assassination on Donald Trump has opened a dark chapter in America's history of political violence. It's also raising serious, serious questions about the safety and security of political candidates and the agency tasked with protecting them. Already, Trump supporters and Republican lawmakers are criticizing the Secret Service. House Speaker Mike Johnson has already announced hearings to explore how a person managed to evade Secret Service agents and climb onto the roof of a building where Trump was holding a rally. The assassination attempt comes less than four months before the November election and certainly could shape the trajectory of the race as well as how the two candidates communicate and engage the electorate. Across continents, one powerful news source. Bringing you diverse perspectives on the issues that matter. We go beyond the boundaries to give you that little extra about every sporting moment. So thank you for making First Post 5 million strong. We're counting on your support and you can trust us to bring you the news unfiltered and unvarnished. Climate change is on our doorstep. It's time for a revolution to take root. And it starts with 1.4 billion Indians. It starts with one tree. One tree for humanity. One tree for Mother Earth. One tree for our future. Project One Tree, a News 18 Network initiative. Hello and welcome to First Post America. I'm Eric Ham, coming to you live from the nation's capital. 